Now, Shari Karizzi is a member of the youth community at the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association in Sheffield. Forgive me if I said that wrong. Is, is that no, no, that's, that's right, right yeah. Um, Shari, just give me your reaction, first of all, when you heard this, this news and how you feel today. All right, well, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, my reaction is just the same as any other humans. It's one of sadness and really despair that this just keeps happening it's not the first time in uh, in recent years and it's it's too regular an occurrence and um obviously thoughts and prayers are with those affected and their families and you know as a as a as a muslim as a young guy it's it's i have to just wholeheartedly condemn this kind of attack it's um it's heinous it's disgusting it's just it's just not there's no place for it in a modern society really and the fact that it keeps happening is just very very saddening and you're right, of course, you, you feel the same as any other decent human being walking around when you hear news like this. But how much does it, does it make you worry about a backlash against Muslims when, when this kind of thing happens? Obviously, you know, it's only natural for there to be a backlash because it, it's occasions like this that get people thinking about the potential causes and the background and stuff like this. But it is, it's sad to see the hard work of, of so many young Muslims, um, you know, across the country. You know, they do, they do a lot for society. They put forward a, a peaceful message. They give the true picture of Islam. And then for somebody to just go and, and do something like this that just undoes all that hard work in an instant. Mm. You know, for example, my community, we go out, we do blood donations regularly. We, we feed homeless uh, people all the time. We serve them food. We, we plant thousands of trees every year. In fact, on Saturday, we've got a charity walk in Cumbria and we'll be raising six-figure sums as we do every year. You know, it's this kind of stuff that we do regularly. Sure. And then for somebody to just go and really just damage that image within a split second it's it's really disheartening sometimes. so what is it about these extremists that make them think they can attack themselves to your religion it, i'm sure that's a question you can't answer but uh, it is difficult to answer that really um categorically but i think that the trouble is with islam it's 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 open to interpretation um and it's 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 a peaceful religion but some people just take it upon themselves to destroy that teaching um and obviously you have to look at where that's coming from um, I think, aside from the government's natural responsibility in this country to perhaps put control things a bit more, I think the community itself has a massive responsibility and a big role to play in this. Um, you know, there are, obviously these people, they, they live in our countries, they, they go to the same shops that we do, they, they, they're they literally in the same society and environment as we are. And there are there are signs that these people must show and we have to pick up on that. And this is the only way that we can really deal with this problem. Um, you know, mosques have a responsibility to engage their youth in more positive things, to keep them away from this kind of stuff and, and really channel channel their, their attitude towards positive things and positive outcomes rather than this kind of behaviour. Because yeah, absolutely a terrorist can come in any, any age, any race, any background, but what we have seen is a lot of young men who become disaffected with society around them, they've become radicalised. We need to stop that happening, don't we? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the government, I think, has, has, has noticed this and perhaps should continue to control and add more measures in, in masks and, and really try to have a, lot, a bigger say in this kind of thing. I think a lot of people really, you know, for example, you look at the people who go to Syria and then they go they go abroad, they go and fight, and then they, they are allowed to come back. I mean, Sadiq Khan was questioned on this not too long ago, and, you know, the mayor of London, and he... He openly admitted that a lot of half of the half of the people that come back to this country, we don't know where they are. We we can't control. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they live, and it's it's this kind of thing. It's just the fact that you have to really. This is a problem that's growing and growing, and you know, members of my community often, we're we're really saddened by this. I mean, we, we plan to hold a minute silence tomorrow, sorry, uh, on Sunday. Um, because of this, and we, we we did it when it happened in Manchester. We did it when it happened in Paris, and it, you know we were there. We were vocal, trying to tell people that this isn't Islam. You know, the true picture of Islam is one of peace. I mean, one of the most famous sayings in in Islam is, "If you are to kill one innocent person, it's as if you've killed the whole of mankind." And you know, this is the spirit that's in, enshrined in me and enshrined in people of my community. And for people to distort that as openly as they have done, it, it's really, really saddening. Well, there, are, there is an article out today su suggesting a different kind of structure. Do you, do you think that would help? I think, I think so. Yeah, I think it can't. It, it, there's no one answer to this problem. It, it's, it's complicated. But what it, 
what it does involve is it has to involve people working together. It has to be a cohesive project. It has to be a solid structure of governments, of in individuals, of, of support groups, of yeah. mosques, of communities working together towards Almost a common Almost a more organised structure. Yeah, it has yeah. to be more yeah, rather than being independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with independence, it's all great. You do things by yourself, but then you, you, have, to, you have to have a network of organisation, of, of, of like a, a really solid method of coming to good a good um, good practice in this in this way and you mentioned um, some of the, the great things that you and, and other people from your community are going to be doing over the next few weeks just tell me a bit more about that yeah, yeah we've got a lot planned I mean this isn't this isn't just um, this month we do this all year round I mean, sure. we, we, we do it seasonally we tree plant when the weather's good um, we, we, we we feed the homeless regularly all year round particularly in winter um, when it when it's harsher winters and they're, they're out in the cold um, but yeah I think the poppy appeal we do that every year as well we're selling poppies we're out on the streets we're, we're holding peace conferences and symposiums all the time all over the country um and you know we, we we're a growing community and we want this we want to really put this image of islam forward and make sure that everybody knows that these people who go out and commit these atrocities they're not representing the true image and that islam is a peaceful religion one of cohesiveness one of brotherhood and that's really the image we're trying to put forward by doing all these activities. Sharik Rusli, a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for coming.